let's talk about tracking gear. Um, I remember oh, we mistake I made last year. I remember <laughs> we went on a hunt together, and um, you we you scouted on the area really good. We got some good footage on our cam, uh, trail cams, and there was a large mammoth buck on one of these pictures, and you had the, the chance at this spot finally after yeah. a couple different days of hunting. Tell, why don't you tell the story a little bit about how you got to get the chance to take that shot at him? Well, he was he was coming in at. I think 7.45, so it wasn't too long after daylight, and uh, I wanted to get out there an hour before daylight. Typically, at least I usually go out an hour to 45 minutes before daylight, but I got out there an hour before on that particular day, and got set up and everything like that, and I was grunting. We had some active scrapes in the area, and uh, next day I know he, he was there. He was on top of me, came trotting on in, he stopped it. I think it was, I believe it was 25 yards. I was at full draw, passed straight through him. He ran 30 yards. He stopped for a second. I saw the blood pouring out of him. He did the whole death wobble, and everyone knows what the death wobble is. They go side to side, and then he took off running, and I heard a loud crash, so I assumed that was it. He was done. I got him. And then that's where the mistake starts. And that's starts. where the mistake started, because I heard a crash, and you know what? They're running through the woods. There's a lot of things. How much crash. time was between the, the time that, that you heard the crash and you actually got down from your tree stand and started pursuing. Oh, it was probably five minutes. Because so, I, I was so certain that he was done. This is, a, this is a good example of what you should not do in a hunting scene if you shoot a deer. Myself and Brian Bauer were all there at this time. Yeah. We all hunt around the same area of state land. We don't hunt the same spots. We're probably a mile apart, yeah. maybe a little bit more than that. It's about how far However, this deer ran. when he shot this deer, we were already being told that he shot the deer, so we all head over there to, to go out and help him search for this deer. Well, on this hunt, um, he shot this deer. They pushed the deer before yeah. Bob, Brian Bauer and I got there. And we got when, there. That's when I abandoned the track. And I left for four hours, and uh, we came back, and we came back with too many people. That's another thing on your track, and don't do it with more than three people. Have one guy for last blood and two guys leading, and then you can rotate guys so your eyes don't get exhausted because it is exhausting sometimes when you're getting a terrible blood trail and you're just getting drops and all that, so you're really studying the ground and your eyes just get tired on you. In, in, but any more than three guys, then you just get people tripping over each other, people walking on the blood trail, flipping over the, the leaves that you're already looking at. And what we think this deer actually did was we got we tracked him to what was it the edge of a swamp, and the blood just stopped. But there was a portion before we got to the edge of that swamp to where the blood was really heavy for like 30 yards, and we didn't really think about this at the time, but we really think that that deer actually went to that swamp, and he did, it was it was nasty swamp. It was it was four feet of water, two feet of water everywhere in there. So I don't think he wanted to get into all that. And I we actually think that deer doubled back and then took the same trail he was on and then hooked off in a different direction. And I think that's another reason why we lost the I lost the animal. Another good thing to remember, not good thing, but what you should do is have a GPS. We didn't have a GPS. Make sure you have like toilet paper or some, some sort of marking system and maybe even a map if you had one. And But this, this trail that we were on is where that buck came from. Yeah. And I think it's really good to point out that he came from some of the thickest horrible area and you could just see the a, rubs all up and down the trip. Dr. Seuss nightmare. It was a nightmare and it came right to his spot and, and that was amazing in itself that he came there. I think that spot which we didn't pursue then this year, I think if we would have followed that trail back to where he came from, we could have probably found some new bucks for using that road. Yeah. But then again, maybe not. You never know. I mean, bucks travel, they go everywhere, we all know that. Um, but trailing a deer is so important to do it correctly. Uh, if you notice in some of the, the newer video, the um, Brian Bauer Hunt Journal, he talks about how he gave it at least an hour before we even got down from that stand, even though he knew he put a good a good shot on that deer. Well, that's the thing too. You got to remember, if you shoot one in the morning, and you know it's not going to rain, why not give it four hours? Exactly. Why not go out to eat? And if it's dead, it's going to be there in four hours. It's and true. You don't have that's to worry about true. coyotes getting out at that quick. At least you shouldn't have to, anyways. Yeah, or depending on where you're living, it could be a bear or bear. something else. So, but yeah, I mean, unless that's you a good point, unless, unless you hear it 
No, not even unless you hear it. Unless you see it go down. Give it at least an hour. Make sure I aren't playing tricks on you either. Yeah. It's extreme. It'd be hard to edit that in. I don't want it to look fake for the viewers. And if you watch any hunting show now, you can totally tell they're fake. Yeah. Like the the lighting's different. You could, the guy pulls back and he's just looking over here and still moving. And then they flip to this deer and it's like, come on, it's the, that's not real, you know. And that's why bow hunter plan BHP TV is this is real. This is hunting. This is BHP TV. That's the whole point. And that's why some of these videos are extremely boring. I mean, it's, to be honest, it's I'm not. It's just all edited. This out. is real. I mean, this is what it really is. We try to edit it just to make it quicker. Yeah, show you all our mistakes. There's a lot of mistakes. I put my hunt journal out there to show you how long and how hard of a hunt it's been for me for 12 hunts of seeing two no. doe. I think no. I saw and I missed. When you set up to shoot a deer. What gives you the confidence that you are going to hit that deer, no matter how far it is? Or like, what what is your equipment? Is your your practice for you specifically? For me, it's probably the practice, getting all the shooting in and everything like that. And then the other thing is controlling your nerves. And everyone has their own techniques for doing that. Mine is uh, typically what actually gets my nerves to calm down is the, a deer seeing me stomping at me, winded me, because I get mad. So now I just look at them and I I try to get mad almost to shoot. And when I put my pen on them, I, uh, I count to three before I shoot and I typically only make it to two. But um, the nerves is the hardest thing. Yeah. And that's I, just I something would, you're gonna have to I would learn agree with to, that. I think. To, to deal with on your own. I think everyone has their own just, tech techniques as far as dealing with that and you're still struggling with that. Yeah, it's always been a struggle of mine um, for bow hunting. Gun hunting's never been a problem for me, but bow hunting... Uh, it's up close and personal. Up close and personal, you take that shot. You There's been so many times where, uh, you know, when I was younger I used to get, not caught, but they look right at me and I'm halfway drawn. So that that's what makes me nervous. Yeah. It's, it's not really the deer being there. It's the sleekness, the quietness, the trying to like sniper almost feel to it, yeah. like a military feel. Like you're you're really trying to snipe this animal, and you're and you're testing your wit, wit, uh, wits against an animal whose senses are all about what's around. And they almost have a sixth sense. Too. They, and they almost have they have an advantage for sure. And you give yourself the advantage by getting a tree stand mm -hmm. and, and, and learning to calm down. And, and I think using all the scent killer products. Scent yeah. killer products. Um, you know, you play in the wind, a lot of ways to, to for you to take advantage of their senses. However, if you can't make a clean shot and not be nervous, you're going to be in, you're going to have problems. And yeah. I think that that's happened to me in the past. I'm finally now starting to really calm down. Well, and I think it helps with the show because yeah. I really feel like all right, I have to do this. Like I have to get a video of this yeah. so for the show. I can't be the only hunter who doesn't get a deer in 2009. I just can't. Another so, thing you can do for getting rid of your nerves is shooting at. Oh, absolutely. Lou Lindale. That's just what I was going to say. A deer. I, you're shooting at a deer and not a bullseye. And absolutely. When you're in the woods, you're not shooting at a bullseye. That's